Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery, and what I've got out here on the bench is a bin that doesn't look much different from most of my other worm bins. It's got your basic label, it's got some typical coverings. Um, the one thing that sets this bin apart a little bit though is the fact that it's got a very, very, very small population. And it's a population of worms that can be tracked back to my original population of red wigglers, which I thought I had lost entirely when all my bins started dying out, and then I just hauled all the material that those worms had been in outside and I let that stuff sit for months and months before I finally went in there and I started just picking through it for the heck of it. Luckily I'd kept it covered so that it wouldn't just dry out immediately. Um, some of it was old enough that it was um, just not going to dry out on its own very easily even if it was left uncovered. I went through some of that material I found all kinds of worms cruising around in this stuff. Stuff that I thought was, you know, too harsh for worms to live in. One way or another, the worms seem to either survive or maybe those worms that I found in there were ones that were born in that material after the, you know, problem that had caused the die-off had dissipated or vanished or whatever the case may be. I can't explain exactly how the population started bouncing back, but the main thing is that they've been bouncing back. So we're going to um, check in on this bit. It's been a couple of weeks since we looked in on it, 14 days, exactly two weeks. It's a 61 day old bin that's received five feedings and every feeding has always been perhaps a couple chunks of melon or maybe one banana peel. Not a lot of food because there's not a lot of worms. So I'm going to put on a glove and we'll get into this thing and we'll uh, see how things are coming along. So let's get started. So you now the whole idea with the plastic being here is that the plastic doesn't allow for any vapor to pass through it. So any of the moisture that's trapped beneath there is more or less trapped. It's not going to escape. It's going to, you know, maybe attempt to evaporate, but the plastic will prevent it from doing so. Um, on the other side here, we've allowed things deliberately to get a little bit drier in the hopes that the worms favor this side and that they congregate in a smaller space rather than the very few worms in here. You're roaming the entire space of this fairly large bin. I wanted to try to focus their travels so that they um, have a higher incidence of bumping into one another. So even though this stuff is all, you know, part of what they were living in, um, I, I've been making it a little bit unfavorable to be there by allowing it to remain um, exposed to the air. This is the larva of some sort of insect <laughs> that made itself at home into these um, systems where I thought it was mainly worms, but it seems like moths, I think, um, also uh, kind of made themselves at home. So I've been, um, I've been definitely finding a good number of moths flying around in my wormery lately. I think every time one of those little caterpillars changes into its final form, it's a moth that it turns into. I actually did take a photograph of one of them. But, you know, I mean, certain things I don't want to have going crazy in my house. This is my basement, after all. And I do have tenants, after all. So I don't need to have, like, an infestation happening here. So I might be a little bit um, swift with the justice if I find stuff like, um, you know, these little caterpillars. I'm not really giving them a pass. I'm taking them out. I'm squashing them, doing away with them. Hopefully it amounts to that many fewer moths zipping around my wormery and then hopefully at some point I'll come to the the end of it you know hopefully there's just not going to be any more after a certain while so I'm look, looking forward to that <laughs> the coverings are pretty damp because of the plastic coverings a lot of times because of the plastic coverings you'll find a worm or two hanging out on the top surface kind of basking in the moisture which we didn't get the pleasure of having today then again, i got to remind myself, this is that bin that's got very, very few worms in it, so don't get your hopes up too high. Sometimes we only find a handful of worms. Last time we found about a dozen, which was a little bit of a surprise, perhaps a greater number than we normally bump into when we're looking through the bin. Um, so I'm trying to come up with a good systematic way of doing this check-in. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to first check to see if the area that I'm hoping for minimal or no worm traffic and is in fact um, more or less worm free. And when I just rifle through the stuff pretty quick it's fair to 
expect that I could be easily passing right by a worm or two, especially if it's a small little one. But last week when I was counting my worms, I kind of created a little pile of them <laughs> right here. And over the course of me continuing to look for worms, I'm sure they all dived down. And then I did try to move them all back over into the moisture zone. But the last time I was in here, I just kind of pulled that stupid maneuver of actually displacing all of the worms completely out of the part of the bin that I'd really like them to remain in. So, I, I think they can sense it, you know, I think they can sense there's moisture nearby and that they have more or less gone there, hopefully. Because I didn't see any worms. I could have gone through here much too quickly. I could have just missed it from my angle, maybe on your point of view from where the camera's at. Maybe you saw something, but as far as I could tell, no worms out here on the dry side, which is kind of the um, hoped for result. So that kind of puts the worms into a, a much smaller space here, right? And the depth, you know, goes up to my knuckles or, you know, up to the joints of my fingers there. So it's not a very deep bin yet. The material just gradually keeps breaking down. I, I sometimes wonder if it's worm action that's breaking this stuff down or is it just something else like, you know, all the um, microbes and bacteria and other creatures in the bin, what's causing the, the breakdown of the material? Because even though there's a very tiny worm population in here, I would almost say that this is a, a bin that looks like it's really coming along good. <laughs> With like a phantom population. That maybe you're lucky to bump into some of them, maybe you won't. And that was kind of the cool thing too with last week's check-in. Besides it being the check-in where I felt like I had maybe found the greatest number of worms I'd seen in quite some time, I um, I was seeing baby worms. And just now, <laughs> as I was about to sort of um, collect my thoughts on what to say, I, I was going to also mention that last week I dropped a hint at maybe, you know, taking a little bit greater effort to see if I can zero in on cocoons in the bin. Because I know they're out there, and I just happened to spot one as I was fiddling around with that worm, trying to find him a nice spot to rest him down there. That's a pretty dark color. Sometimes when they're first, first deposited in the bin, a worm cocoon is almost like the appearance of like a little, like a little green something. Basically a very light greenish color and once it starts to take on this darker brownish color It's you know getting pretty far along in its process and probably doesn't have a great deal more time needed before it can um, Produce some baby worms So that right there was the exact thing I was hoping to see in today's check-in Was you know even if we don't see a whole lot of worms If we see a bunch of cocoons then we know what to expect in the near future so, so far, both worms we've bumped into are pretty puny, very puny. Both juveniles, for sure. Both born in this bin, I would have to guess. So I remember when I populated this bin, I'm pretty sure we, you know, hunted down pretty good-sized worms. Or, well, you know, don't, don't hold me to that, because hunting down the worms to populate this bin, to tell you the truth, I don't even exactly remember how I... Um, assembled the worms for this system <laughs> i um somehow feel like i might have just lured them out of the old material that they'd been in just providing them a, a big new fresh batch of bedding and food and moisture and everything else and i think i just sort of let them make their way over there on their own migration style but i don't really remember exactly it would be nice if I kind of slowed down enough to be able to see cocoons, but it, it's also cool enough for me to be able to just spot little baby worms. That was a big worm, fell off my fingertip, but there's a baby worm right here. I thought I saw another baby worm right there. It's very easy to, um, to miss these little guys as you plow through this stuff. So I'm starting to get pretty good confident feeling about this bin. I think things are going to go pretty good in here. I think the you know the population is just going to gradually increase steadily right before our eyes for a little while. I think it's going to be um, a little bit of a search to try to track down worms in the system, but it does seem like there's going to be more and more and more, right? So look, I mean, here you got one, two. There was the one we just put down. There's a third one, a fourth one. So just from jiggling the material around, it seemed like we spotted 
a couple worms already, so I'm not keeping track this time. I've, I feel like I've been kind of um, running all these numbers and trying to keep track of all these numbers, and I've even been like averaging a lot of people's guesses on how many worms there are. And I think this time I'm going to give my brain a little break and just you know check in, see how the food that I left for them last time two weeks ago was doing. If there's any, I don't think there is. <laughs> Um, so at some point soon, I'm going to have to take a quick little pause to head upstairs and get them a little bit more to eat. And something like this, you know, I mean, this banana stem probably got a few worms in it, I would think. Depends on how much it's broken down. Actually, it's still pretty firm. That might be the only remainder of what we gave them last time. That's incredible. I don't see any other chunks. Usually you'll find a nice little chunk of banana peel. But, you know... Maybe um, maybe I've got to go a little bit more generous on the food I give them. <laughs> or check in more frequently, whatever the case may be. So, uh, whatever, we'll just pick around here a little bit more. See, I mean, just here, uh, one handful, I see a big worm pops out. Then I can already see a little baby here and another small one, well, medium-sized one there. It's already got a clitellum, so it's already like at that maturity stage where it could probably reproduce. So this is really starting to feel more and more like a regular everyday worm bin where you can kind of zero in on where the worms are if you go to where the moisture is and maybe just pick around where you knew the last feeding had been and you'll find worms. So I don't know, I hope you agree. Uh, I think this bin's doing great. If you've been following along, there have been times when it was pretty questionable, you know, where this is going to lead to, <laughs> if anywhere. Um, but this is really just looking exactly like what I'd been hoping for even though there'd been a kind of a slow start feeling to it at this point it just feels like um it kind of kicked into high gear based on what I've seen here so it's looking good and we're gonna have some um hungry mouths to feed here so I better go a little bit more generous than just one banana peel this time I think right so let's take a break I'm gonna head upstairs to the fridge grab them a little assortment of um foods to give them and we'll be right back to put that food right into here so the feeding they're getting here is a significantly greater portion than what they got last time. Last time I was one banana peel, I believe. I don't think they got coffee. So this is definitely um, maybe three times the amount of food they got last time. So I'm going to apply that with a, a little sprinkling of almost powder fine. Not, not quite powder fine. Um, maybe like coarse sand on a beach. <laughs> um, this is just eggshells. Pulverized eggshells. We're going to give it to them as grit, combine it with their food. So I'm going to um, I'm just going to place their food right in here. Sometimes I add fresh bedding with feedings, and this time you know there's a little bit of bedding that's sort of coming along for the ride anyway, um, right there in the form of the filter that the coffee's in. So they're getting a little bit of a boost to their bedding. I just don't want to go too overboard. There is plenty of bedding in this system. I don't know if there's really a need to go um, too overboard on expanding the the amount of material in this bin. I I definitely like the the fact that you know things are a little bit cramped and crowded for them. So I do believe that it probably is helping with the um, the reproduction. At least I hope it is. You know, I, I have no really good way to know for sure other than that one cocoon that I saw. But you know see one there's got to be others I know that if I just slowed down I'd see a whole bunch you know but I don't know why I'm just kind of impatient I remember a few months ago I used to take the time to just gaze down into the bin and look for cocoons and I'd find tons of them but um, <laughs> lately I don't find myself doing that for whatever reason I probably should who knows this is a pretty big banana peel must have come off a really large size banana so this is a pretty hearty feeding two banana peels a portion a whole portion of coffee one day's worth of coffee and you know since this is not really meant to be sort of like a covering type piece of paper it is meant to be more bedding I, I sort of distinguish for myself you know what shall this paper be used for and then I alter it to <laughs> uh, fit the function so 
just kind of shredding it up a little bit, help it along. And once we put the plastic back on here, the moisture that comes out of those banana peels, I think should um, help dampen things in here a little bit. So the fact that we're taking relatively dry coffee, relatively dry paper, I think they're going to dampen up quite nicely in a short period of time. Um, the moisture, I think, is good, you know. It's maybe not... Maybe not very damp, but it feels, you know, like it should be comfortable for a worm. I don't know, maybe it could use a little bit of moisture. I don't know. The funny thing I've been doing lately, which I just don't do very often either, is... Here's a leftover stem from a banana peel. Let's make sure we put that with the food, too. So I've been just taking water and adding it, so... What the heck? Let's give it a try. The only stuff that's right below where I'm squirting is the coffee filter bits and the coffee and the banana. So it'll just drip, kind of drip down onto the feeding area a little bit. Kind of ringing the dinner bell for these little guys. And I think in general just a little bit of moisture can not hurt. The stuff you saw it was very loose and granular all throughout. So I don't think we're going to generate a whole bunch of nasty muddy, muddy material here. I think we're just going to kind of give it the moisture that the worms really like. And it should help things um, continue humming along nicely as they've been it seems you know I also wonder if it might be time to start phasing in a little bit more and more of this um, material that we'd left out here to dry gradually an increase in the hydrated area in the bin if we're gonna in fact see kind of a little population explosion happening in here and um, I sure hope we do <laughs> maybe we can gradually just start you know letting the whole bin become a nice habitable place to be but for now, I'm sticking to this whole concept of trying to limit their space, which theoretically is going to, um, you know, help increase the um, occurrences of worms bumping into each other and potentially mating. So I kind of like the idea of keeping them corralled up in sort of a specific space. I don't even know if corralled up is the right idea. It's just, you know, giving them one part of the bin that's definitely more cozy and comfortable than the other side. So, whatever you want to consider it as. So yeah, things are looking pretty nice in here. 61 days, two months old basically. And I think we're on the road to recovery with these little guys. So, that's pretty much it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. Alright everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.